What is genetic predisposition? That is a fantastic question. If you've noticed that there are certain health you know, conditions or diseases that tend to run in your family, you may have been wondering if you yourself are at risk for developing those same issues. You may even been wondering to yourself, what is a genetic predisposition? If that all sounds familiar, then you are in the right place because in today's video, I am here to answer that question. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Dr. Kelly Shockley, Doctor of Cause, Chiropractic, Board Certified in Sports Medicine and Specialized in Clinical Nutrition. In this video, we're gonna be going over what genetic predisposition actually is and how it differs from inherited diseases. Then we will be answering the most common question, can I prevent a genetic predisposition from occurring? And finally, I will be sharing with you the best way to know if you are at risk and how to protect yourself. There is more to it than genetic testing. Let's get started. What is genetic predisposition? What it is, is it's an increased chance that you may develop a certain disease based on your genetic makeup. Here's the thing though. A genetic predisposition contributes to the development of the disease, but it does not actually cause it. A genetic predisposition is not the same as a genetic disease or an inherited disease. It's simply an indicator that, given the right circumstances and conditions, you're more likely to develop that particular type of disease. It takes at least one or more contributing factors to make this disease actually come about. Whereas an inherited disease or a genetic disease is something that you have no control over. So a genetic predisposition you have control over where a genetic disease or an inherited disease you do not have control over. Let me give you some examples of inherited diseases. One that we know most commonly would be cystic fibrosis. There's another one known as fragile X syndrome. Hemochromatosis is probably the most common inherited disease that's out there. Huntington's disease, Marfan syndrome, polycystic kidney disease, those are all different examples of inherited diseases. So let me give you some examples of diseases that have associated genetic predispositions. Now, again, remember, the predisposition does not mean you actually end up with the disease. It is not what causes this, the disease. It just means you have more potential to have this disease, given circumstances being correct, than somebody who does not uh, have a genetic predisposition. So some examples of genetic predispositions are type 2 diabetes, heart disease, cancer, asthma, obesity, addiction, autism, stroke, Several of the mental health illnesses have genetic predispositions. Celiac disease, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, irritable bowel syndrome, and all the autoimmune issues. And again, I want to bring clarity to this. Just because you have a genetic predisposition does not mean you end up with the disease. Now, I'm curious, did you have any idea that that is the difference between a genetic predisposition versus a genetic or an inherited disease? Or did you even know that that was the definition of a genetic predisposition? Just let me know down in the comments below. You providing me feedback and engaging allows me to help continue to provide more value to you, which is why I'm doing these videos. I read every comment, so please take time. Let me know your answer to that question. Did you know what a ge genetic predisposition was? Did you know it was that? Um, and did you understand the difference? Awesome, thank you. Now, the most commonly asked question that I get in relationship to genetic predisposition is, can I actually prevent it? Now, the answer is yes. Yes, you can. Because again, the very definition is, it just means you have more likelihood of developing disease, but the conditions have to be right. So now we have to describe this a little bit further. If you have a genetic predisposition, think of it as a light switch, okay? There's something within the body that is coded for, let's say, type 2 diabetes, since that was the first example I gave you. Now, just because you have this genetic predisposition, again, as by definition, does not mean you're going to get type 2 diabetes. So what actually means you're going to? So think of this as the light switch. If the light switch gets turned on, you end up with type 2 diabetes. Okay. If you keep the light switch turned off, you never end up with type 2 diabetes. So what turns the light switch on that creates the reality of this genetic predisposition? It's your lifestyle factors. And as we listened 
or as I explained to you, the definition is generally it takes at least one contributing factor, oftentimes it's multiple contributing factors, to turn the light switch on and make whatever this genetic predisposition is come to fruition. So what are some of the lifestyle factors that influence this or make us more at risk or put us more to the path of we're turning the light switch on? Not sleeping the way that we know we should be. Not managing stress. I mean, we can't get away from it. So we need to be doing something actively to be managing it, right? Eating food that we know is not good for us. Absolutely huge variable. You're eating either eating your way to better health with each bite or you're robbing your health with each bite. Okay. Now again, you don't have to be perfect, but you do want to do things right at least 80 to 90% of the time. So are you exercising? It's the classic lifestyle factors we know that it requires for us to be healthy. How well are we doing with those? How much do we care about them? I mean, I know people who are like, well, I don't care. I'm going to die from something, which to each their own. But you really do have the power to not end up with a genetic predisposition type of a problem coming to fruition. It's all about lifestyle. And here's your saving grace. Let's say you've slacked off a little bit. Maybe you weren't sleeping as well, or maybe there's lifestyle factors that have been affecting your sleep. Like, I don't know, maybe you had a child and they weren't so great at sleeping. Okay. And maybe because life is hectic, you're not always eating home cooked, you know, organic grass fed, pasture raised, like quality whole food meals. And maybe life is just really intense and stressful, especially over the last year and a half. You know, maybe there was a job loss or you've got everybody at home and everybody's getting on each other's nerves. Whatever the case may be, whether it was intentional or not intentional. And let's say this light switch gets flipped on. Now, all of a sudden, you are showing signs of we're sticking with type 2 diabetes. You're showing signs that you're becoming type 2 diabetic. Here's your saving grace. If you address the lifestyle factors that allow the light switch to be turned on, and now whatever this genetic predisposition was coded for to be expressed, you have the ability to turn the light switch back on, contrary to what anybody wants to tell you. Of course, the sooner you jump on this, the better, but you have the ability to turn the light switch back off. Inherited diseases, you can't do that with at all. You just have them from the time you're born to the time you pass. You can't alter them. Genetic predispositions, you can totally alter. So yes, you can prevent them. And even if you start going down the path and you're bringing online, you turned on the light switch to whatever you are just genetically predisposed for, you don't have to have that be reality. You know, one of the best examples I can give you is when we figured out about the genetic predisposition to breast cancer, the BRCA gene. And all of a sudden, any woman who tests positive for it was going out and getting double mastectomies, which is highly invasive. I can completely understand where they were at emotionally. They didn't want to go through that reality. So they were taking care of it the best way they knew how at the time. That gene is a genetic predisposition. It works as a light switch. They don't have to end up with breast cancer if they live their life the way that they know they need to in order to be healthy. So you absolutely can prevent it. You can also stop it in its tracks and reverse it. So long as you catch it early enough, you know, not too far gone. But even if you're too far gone, we can still do things to improve the quality of life that you have. Now, before I get into the only real way to know if you're at risk, that is not genetic testing. I just want to take a moment and remind you to click the subscribe button down below, turn those notifications on, and hey, while you're down there, why don't you give me a big thumbs up if you're enjoying this video? I appreciate it greatly. I am producing videos for you specifically every single week, multiple times a week, to help teach you how to take back control of your health so that you can live the highest quality of life for the time that you are here and achieve what I ultimately like to call total body mastery. So again, Click the subscribe button, turn the notifications on. That way you never miss out on a future episode. While you're down there, give me a big thumbs up. Appreciate your support. Thank you. All right. What is this only way to truly know if you are at risk? That really has nothing to do with genetic testing. It is complete and comprehensive, what I call foundational testing. So yes, it's still testing. If we're not testing, we're guessing. You can go get genetic testing done. It's not very cheap, though it's more affordable than what it used to be. And the nice thing about it is... You only have to do it once because your genes are your genes. They don't change. So you could figure out what you have predispositions for. But then how do you know if you're truly at risk? If it's all based off of lifestyle, we have to have a way to 
know what your current level of health is. And let me tell you, how you feel is not the best indicator of how healthy you are. We have an amazing ability to adapt, an amazing ability to, to compensate and have this huge reserve tank. The only time symptoms show up, which are your body's warning signals that there is a problem, is long after there's been a problem. For example, have you ever known somebody who seemed to be totally healthy, you know, living an active life, eating right, didn't have body fat, you know, healthy, vivacious, young, and they dropped out of a heart attack? Or have you ever known somebody who just went in for a routine check and all of a sudden they find out they have cancer? I have. I've known both circumstances. Why is that? It's because how you feel is not the best indicator of how healthy you are. Things are brewing beneath the surface. And unless you have the ability to ask the body, where are you at health-wise, you will never truly know your current level of health. Genetic testing doesn't tell you your current level of health. It just shows your genetic makeup. Okay? The type of testing you have done with your MD when you go in and you get an annual exam is not comprehensive enough. It has some of the markers in there. But the ranges have been skewed, too. Quick side note, the only, like, do you know how they determine what that clinical reference range is? Like, if you've ever had blood work done, you're looking, when you get your results back, you're looking for H's and L's or highs or lows to show you that you're either outside of range or inside of range. Those are the ones that are being flagged. You don't want to see those. If you don't see them, you know that your blood marker came back within this clinical reference range. And the way they find that clinical reference range, the way they determine what it is, is they take the average of the average population. And guess what? Americans have not gotten healthier over the last 30, 50 years. We have gotten more and more sick. So ultimately, the other way to translate that is it's the average of a sick population. Because guess what? The people who get blood work done more frequently are not your healthy people. They're your sick people. It's what all the data is around, is around sick population. So I don't know about you, but I don't want to be average of sick. You shouldn't want to be average of sick either, okay? So you have to have the ability to test every system in the body all at once without having to see every specialist that is capable of doing that and then trying to patch all the information together yourself. You have to also be able to look for things that they're not looking for, like toxin issues, because unfortunately we live in the most toxic, toxic environment the world has ever seen. It is a common underlying contributing factor to people's health issues. And it is one of the things that will trigger that light switch to turn on with a genetic predisposition. So if you're not looking for toxins, you're not doing comprehensive enough testing. Now, if I'm sitting here and you're somewhat freaking out about what I'm telling you, don't, because I've got you. I can show you how to do this from wherever you're at. Just go to the description down below this video, okay? Click the description so it expands. Look in there for the five-day health challenge. Now, I promise you it doesn't take five full days, okay? It's just taking information and breaking it down into more digestible chunks so that I'm not just talking at you for a few hours. In this health challenge, I show you the exact framework I use with all of my patients near and far that determines the exact level of their health, gets to the root cause of any underlying health issue, even if you don't have symptoms of it, helps to create your exact plan, your roadmap moving forward to address all of these issues, and then shows you how to optimize it. It gives you my exact framework, okay? So don't freak out. Go down, click that link, and learn how you can take back control of your health. Learn how you can have certainty that you're not going to end up having the same health story as what your family has had. Learn how you can keep those genetic predisposition light switches turned off. Or if it's turned on, you don't have to fear, you can turn it back off. I hope this video was informative. Okay, I look super forward to seeing you on the inside of that health challenge and on a future episode. Guys, thanks so much for being here. Take care and God bless.